Okay, so this has been a subject of conversation for a little bit, and uh, well, I think it's time to make a video about it. So what we've got here, I've got about three pounds of potatoes, okay? And these are Idaho's. Now, um, Idaho or Russet, right? Uh, what we're gonna make today is uh, palm puree, um, mashed potatoes. However, there's a lot that you can do with mashed potatoes and there's no wrong answer, okay? So you can see that each of these potatoes is, you know, here, 11 ounces, nine ounces, 12 ounces, 12 ounces. This one's gonna be the smallest one, 10 ounces. But you notice also they're around the same thickness, kind of. Um, you know, uh, when I buy potatoes like this, I, I like to do it so that it's easier to peel them because there's more surface for me to grab and less peeling involved than if I had a bunch of little potatoes. When we're making uh, mashed potatoes, uh, you want to use a starchy potato. Now, here's the conundrum, right? You want a starchy potato. However, you don't want to work the potato to work the starch up and then make your end product gummy. Anything else you do is up to you. Just don't make them gummy, okay? So if you want to just wash these and then boil them and then get them dry and then mash them and then whip them with a little butter and milk, great. If you want and leave the skin on. You want to take the skin off, which is what I'm going to do, great. You want to put a little garlic in there, knock yourself out. You want to put some beets in there for a little color or anything else, go for it, right? But I'm going to make the classic um, French whipped potatoes, palm puree, um, and then um, we're going to talk about uh, the different techniques. So uh, what I'm going to do is after they're peeled, I'm going to cut them into little strips, boil them, in some water to get them tender, right? And I'll show you how tender they need to be. And then um, we're going, to, I'm going to rice them using a, a, a potato ricer, uh, or you can use a food mill, or you can use a masher. I don't actually have one of those, but you wanna make sure you don't overwork them. And that's why I like to use the food mill or the ricer, because I'm not gonna overwork it. And then at the end, I'm gonna whip them so that it's a nice, creamy end product. But if you want them chunky, fine, it's okay. It's okay, everything's okay, as long as they're not gummy. Got it? Okay. So step one, I'm gonna use a standard, you know, potato peeler. And I'm just gonna peel these guys, and when they're peeled, throw them in a little bowl of water so that they don't get discolored before I start cooking them. Got it? Okay, so here are my potatoes peeled and I'm going to keep them submerged in the water. Um, I'm going to get my cutting board now and slice them into slices and then we're going to get them uh, boiled, uh, cooked. And then the trick here is you want to make sure that they're dry before we move on to the next step of whipping them. All right, but we'll go through it step by step. You'll see. All righty. So what do we do? Always the same thing. Right? I'm a lefty, so I'm left. We're going to cut them to the same thickness, right? All about the same thickness so that they cook at the same rate. Right, I'm going to throw those in the pot. I remember watching Andre Sultner on TV once, and he just, man, he just went pop, pop, pop with the potato. And you can see it's kind of a firm... And he just went pop, pop, pop through it. And I don't know how the hell he moved his knife so fast. It was, it was pretty incredible. I'm not that confident. Um, and you see how I really got to focus on getting that knife through there. And this is a sharp knife. You know. Okay, one more. But you see how they're all the same thickness. So they're going to cook at the same rate. That's the goal. Okay. All right. Next step. Show you how much water I put in there. I didn't quite totally cover them, um, but you know, 
there's enough water in there. Now, if these potatoes become tender enough and I don't boil all the water away, I might just pour it out because at the end, I want them to be dry. That's the, that's the next goal here. Uh, but I'm going to put them on the stove now and um, I'll put the lid on, get them to the boil, and then um, get them tender. And uh, they've got to be tender enough so that they can be mashed and they got to be cooked through, obviously. Um, and then that's it. All right, so you see, that's about all I'm putting the flame on. And there are my potatoes. And um, I'm going to put the lid on, but I don't want it to boil over. So I'm going to keep an eye, and as soon as it starts ro rolling boil, I'm going to reduce the flame a little bit, keep the lid on for a little while, maybe five, ten minutes. Then I'll take the lid off. The potatoes are going to absorb some water, and then the rest is going to evaporate. And then when they're tender, if there's still too much liquid in there, I'll pour some of that liquid out. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I want this to be a dry product before I move to the next step. Okay, danger, danger, this is what you don't want. You don't want that boiling over, right? So what we're gonna do is, we're now gonna lower that flame, right? And leave it uncovered and let that water evaporate. So I'll be back in about 10 minutes just to take a look at it. All right, so I can have a fork and I'm just gonna poke and I can feel that these are still, they still feel like they're raw. Right? Some of them feel a little, that one's tender, right? So maybe that wasn't submerged, right? This one's a little more tender, that's tender. But some of them feel a little bit raw. I want to make sure they're all cooked through, right? That one fell apart. That's fine, right? We just boil them. In a little bit, they're going to be cooked through all of them. And then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so while those potatoes are boiling, this is a potato ricer. Basically, I'm going to put potatoes inside there, and then you push it and you squeeze down, and it extrudes them out there. Okay, that's one way to minimally handle the potato. And the other way is with a food mill. Okay, so basically, I'm just going to put some boiled potato. Put some boiled potato into this contraption and then just turn it like that. And in both cases, um, I'm going to be able to um, mash that potato and not process it uh, much. You know, uh, I don't actually have a masher, you know, one of those, you know, mash, mash, mash. I don't have one of those, but that works too. You just don't want to overwork it. But here's what you never want to do. You never, ever, ever want to put it in a food processor because then you're going to wind up with glue. And you don't want glue, you want creamy mashed potatoes. That's the goal. So I didn't drain any water or anything. You see how it's almost dry, right? So it's going to let that, leave that on the flame for a little bit longer, let it dry up. And then we're gonna rice them. Or we just put them in the food mill. You'll see. You see how they all fell apart? Like it almost looks like mashed potatoes without even mashing them yet. You'll see. This part's kind of critical though because you don't want to let it burn either. So you want to make sure that they dry up, but you want to make sure that they're not sticking to the bottom and burning. Okay, and so far we're good. Right? We're not burning. So, you know, this takes a little bit of attention. But believe me, it's worth it. So I think in another minute, these potatoes are coming off the heat. Okay, so here is my pot of potatoes. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop them into the bowl. And I'll show you why. It's basically like Towers of Hanoi. So I'm just going to put these potatoes into this bowl. And you notice how not a lot of mashing needs to be done I mean, but like I said we're making French whipped potatoes that's what we're doing okay okay so there are my potatoes in the bowl now, the reason why I switched them 
pop is because now I'm going to put my ricer on top of the pot. Now, is that in focus? Probably not. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So now you can see there's my food mill. Okay. And I'm just going to throw some potato in there. that and look at what we get right that's beautiful now those are ready for whipping all right so I'm gonna do this whole batch I don't need to bore you with all the details okay so there are my potatoes and if you see I'm just gonna pick up a little bit uh, they they're dry they've got a really nice clean potato flavor so there's no um, there's nothing in there yet so now the next step is going to be to add um, the milk and the butter and a little bit of salt. So here we go. What I've got here is a half stick of butter, happens to be, and I've got six ounces of milk. So I'm going to use a rule of thumb, which you may uh, stick to or you may change it, but I'm going to say two ounces of milk per pound of potato, maybe and a half a stick of butter for those three pota four potatoes is plenty. And then we're gonna use about a teaspoon of salt. All right, so here is my pot of potatoes. Hey, I got the right burner, what do you know? Burn around about that high. And for three pounds of potatoes, I'm gonna use just a teaspoon of salt. I can always add more, right? I can never take it away. And there's my six ounces of milk and I might put more and my half stick of butter and now I'm probably going to knock the phone the camera down when I do this but basically I'm going to just stir it up get it incorporated and then we're going to see I hit, I hit it we're going to whip it uh, All right, uh, let's see if I can do this while I'm recording without destroying the camera, huh? You see what's happening, right? Everything's just getting, so I'm making basically an emulsion. Just whipping those potatoes. All right. Are there any chunks of butter left? Oh, yeah. And you see how they're not soupy. Right? I didn't put too much liquid. It's almost like whipped cream. Or vanilla ice cream. But it's potatoes. They're getting shiny, right? All right, let's give it a taste. Oh, shit, that's good. All right. I think we are done. That's it. Over and out. And they're creamy, but not gummy. That's the important part. Like I said, you could have put garlic in there. You can do whatever you want. You can leave the skins on. Just never put it in a food processor. Because you don't want them gummy. You don't want glue. Done.